Off. Welcome to you. And that is about a, a very liberal left-wing historian in England, uh, a genuine scholar, uh, historian, who made a documentary about Islam. And he had no agenda, but he found, he concluded that, for example, Mecca is only mentioned once in the Quran, that Muhammad is a debatable figure, his existence. And, and what he really says is that Islam was, it was a growth, a product of the Arabic empire rather than vice versa. These are, are claims that he backs up with historical research. He, of course, has been threatened with death, insulted, abused, may well have to go into hiding. It doesn't surprise me at all. Our next guest, we're going to call him IQ Rasuli. That's not his name. We're just going to say he's in Europe. We're not going to be more specific about his location. He's from the Middle East originally. He's written a trilogy of books about Islam. He has a website, and you will see on Skype he has to disguise him. So, a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. Now, you're from the Middle East originally. You went to study in England after that. When did you change your view so radically about Islam and the Muslim faith? It took me 30 years of research. I had to study. In Iraq, you didn't have the opportunity to study what you want. But in Europe, I was able to research everything. I, had, I could go to museums, I could go to libraries. So I spent literally almost 30 years of researching the subject in Arabic and in English. Mm. It, it's very different from the West because in North America, in Europe, Probably every two or three weeks, another book is published condemning Christianity, saying it has no historical basis. Uh, uh, there's, there's even a United Church minister, a so-called Christian minister in Ontario, who writes books like this. But uh, as you know better than others, within the Islamic world, it is virtually impossible to write a book critiquing Islam. It is forbidden in the Quran to question the Quran. Muhammad made sure that his followers will never question the Quran. And they haven't questioned it for 1400 years. And the people who did question it, in fact, were either murdered or put in prison. Mm. May I start? I I'm sorry, say that again? Can I start about... Let me start. Okay. Calling Islam peaceful ranks as one of the most egregious lies that has ever been insinuated into the human consciousness. Islam does not mean peace because its root verb is aslama, meaning submission. Mm -hmm. That is submission to the will of one God. Muhammadan Islam is not a religion. It's a cult belief system, the cult of Muhammad. Allah is most definitely not the same as the God of Jesus, Moses, and Abraham. Because Allah was only the name of the supreme God of rock, gods of pagan Arabia, among a pantheon of 360 gods and goddesses in stone. Centuries before Muhammad and his Quran. By the way, his father, Muhammad's father, was called Abdullah, meaning the slave of Allah. Another item about Islam that people don't know. Jihad is most certainly not a spiritual struggle to commune with God, but eternal war, eternal war by the followers of Muhammad against all those who do not believe as they do. Uh, currently, that's 80% of humanity. In a nutshell, the greatest threat to human civilization in the 21st century is most assuredly Fundamentalist Muhammadan Islam with or without weapons of mass destruction as 9-11 and subsequent Islamic acts of terror all over the world have been proving. They but, always... But, but let, 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 me, let, me, let me ask you a question. Hold on, sir, please, if, if I may. I am one of those journalists who, I, with all due humi humility, has had the courage to, to step up and say things about Islam that others won't. However, Surely the vast majority of individual Muslims have found a way to practice their faith, whether we agree with their faith or not, in a peaceful, gentle way. They do believe that their faith informs everything they do, which is why they are honest and law-abiding. It is surely a, a small minority who have interpreted Islam to be radical and violent. That's not true. Anybody who wears a hijab, any female who wears a hijab, any human being who says he's a Muslim must abide by Sharia. Sharia is automatically anti every human being who is not a Muslim. Those who are not strapping bombs on themselves are only being in the minority. Look, in Europe, when the Muslim population became nearly 10%, they, are, they have demanded Sharia. In many cities in Europe today, citizens of this con the countries of Europe cannot go into the Muslim areas. Mm -hmm. The police cannot go. The ambulances cannot go. They are run by the so-called radical Muslims. There is no such thing as a radical Muslim, Mr. Corey. 
Sharia is hate-mongering, war-mongering, misogynist, racist, vile, and is totally ungodly. I know what I'm saying sounds outrageous. Right. No, no, no. You, hey, I'm allowing you to say it, but I also have to question you. There, there are areas of Europe uh, that are non-Muslim where the police, when they do go in, will only go in, in in twos and threes as well. It has nothing to do with religion. It has to do with social breakdown and drugs and gangs. Yeah, but that's not true. Because in how could they have a Muslim entity in a state which is Christian? I want to know. Where do you find a Christian in any Muslim country who is... Uh, equal to the Muslims. Mm -hmm. They are murdering Christians in my country. I come from Iraq. Mm. In 2003, we had one and a quarter million Christians. Today, as we speak, there are only 200,000. The cops of Egypt are being exterminated, literally exterminated. If not exterminated, they are forced to leave. Okay, well, let, let me ask you a question. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me ask you a question here. I agree with you completely that the purge of Christianity, the pogroms, what is happening in, in Iraq and Syria and Egypt and Pakistan, without doubt. However, some may say to you, look, under Assad, under Saddam Hussein, Christians were protected and, and lived lives of equality. When the United States and their then opened the doors to all of the fundamentalists who then declared war on Christians. So whose fault is that? Not at all. Christianity has been under death and destruction for 1400 years. You know, some people, many Christians say to me, what about the Crusades? Those people who ask this question must be really very stupid people. Because the Crusades were the result of 350 years of jihad. I agree. So I agree. agree I, I, I wrote an entire chapter about it in one of my books. I, I, I agree with that. Let me ask you, because we'll have you back on the show at some point, but let me ask you this to conclude. Uh, are you threatened? Are people warning you about, about your future, about your safety? Of course. You should read the emails that I receive. I get 95%, God bless you. Yeah. I get 5%, we shall murder you. Every single one of them from a Muslim. Mm. I get, you know, I mean it, 95% support from Hindus, Buddhists, Christians, Jews. The only threats I get are from Muslims. And all I ask from them is to prove me wrong. Mm. Mr. Corin, I have over one million dollars to disprove me. Four years later, not a penny has been taken. All right. Well, hey, I, we, we should exchange emails at some point, because I can do a bit better in that I, I can include as well, uh, you know, uh, very angry teachers, r radical gays, the father. Anyway, listen, a pleasure. I'm sure we'll have mm, a few emails and comments after this interview, but that's not going to stop me or shut me up. Thank you so very much indeed. God bless you. Thank you very much, sir. Bye. Thank you, Al Rasuli, for exposing the roots of Islam did not continue from Yahweh, God of Israel. By the end of this video clip, everyone should comprehend that Islam does not qualify to be called the religion of truth nor the religion of peace, for the following reasons. 1. Nowhere in the Quran is there an association between Angel Gabriel and Allah from the mouth of Angel Gabriel to Muhammad saying, I'm Gabriel sent by Allah your God. As far as the precedent law is concerned, Angel Gabriel was sent by El Shaddai, to speak for him only. 2. El Shaddai later appeared to Prophet Moses, and told him personally that he was known as El Shaddai to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob who was later given the name Israel by the angel who wrestled with him. But he would be known as Yahweh from the time of Moses until forever. 3. Prophet Moses was given the precedent law, that no prophet should speak falsely in the name of Yahweh nor in the name of other Elohim lest that same prophet shall die. Yahweh God did not command Prophet Moses, to stone such false prophet but he affirmed even that prophet shall die, which implies Yahweh will kill the false prophet prematurely. In Deuteronomy 18 verse 20, Yahweh said to Moses, but the prophet, which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other Elohim, even that prophet shall die. Now, the manner of penalty for a man who merely gathered sticks on the Sabbath day, was stoning to death. Numbers 15.32 And while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day. Numbers 15.35 and Yahweh said unto Moses, The man shall be surely put to death, all the congregation shall stone him with stones without the camp. Numbers 25 5 And Moses said unto the judges of Israel, Slay ye every one his men, 
that were joined unto Bolpir. Unquote In order for Prophet Moses to understand the law of Yahweh God explicitly, he was told several times about the name, whom he should speak for. So we can be sure, that Yahweh our God had given only one name to Prophet Moses and also to his brother Aaron and his sister Miriam the prophetess. We have three eyewitnesses, who knew the holy name of Yahweh God lest all of them could not comply with the law in Deuteronomy 18 verse 20. By tracing backward on the name of Elohim, it can be deduced that his name is Yahweh. Deuteronomy 18 verse 5 for Yahweh thy Elohim has chosen him Levi out of all thy tribes, to stand to minister in the name of Yahweh, him and his sons forever. Deuteronomy 18 verse 15 Yahweh thy Elohim will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brothers, like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken. Deuteronomy 18 16 According to all that thou desired of Yahweh thy Elohim in Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying let me not hear again the voice of Yahweh my Elohim, neither let me see this great fire any more, that I die not. Deuteronomy 18 verse 17 to 19 And Yahweh said unto me Moses, they have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brothers, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass, that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. Unquote The whole assembly of the children of Israel heard from Yahweh their God audibly, speaking from the top of Mount Horeb. Deuteronomy 4 verse 15 Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves, for ye saw no manner of similitude on the day, that Yahweh spoke unto you in Horeb out of the midst of the fire. According to the Shia Muslim tradition, the Nijran Christians sent a deputation to Medina in 632 AD in 10th year of Hijra or migration from Mecca to Medina, to find out what kind of Jesus Christ that he was preaching. Muhammad proclaimed falsely in the name of Allah, that Jesus was created by Allah, even as he created Adam. There was an element of forgery as nowhere did Jesus Christ spoke for Allah the Moon God during the pre-Islamic period. The symbol of crescent at the apex of the ancient mosques or minarets, speaks loud and clear, that the Muslims carried on the pre-Islamic symbol for the Moon God, the male deity. Arabians worship the Sun God as the female deity, of which the symbol is embossed on the inner door of the Kaaba. Even as the cross of Jesus Christ speaks for the key message, that he preached to his followers, the crescent carries the key message, that Allah, whom Muhammad preached as his God. Muhammad profaned the name of Yahweh by replacing it with Allah which I swear, Jesus Christ never spoke for Allah, because the name of God is carried by the word is Ra El. The word El, means El Shaddai or God Almighty. But Al means the article the, and El means God. Hence Allah means the God is not synonymous to El Shaddai, which is found in the word Israel. In Quran 61 verse 6, Muhammad recited, And remember, Jesus, the son of Mary, said, O children of Israel, I am the messenger of Allah sent to you, confirming the law which came before me, and giving glad tidings of a messenger to come after me, whose name shall be Ahmad. Unquote Muhammad was very evil to put the words Allah and Ahmad into the mouth of Jesus Christ, in order to lend credibility to his claim, as the final prophet of Allah. This method does not work for Muhammad, because his forefather was not a custodian of holy scripture, by his own confession in Quran Sabbath 34 verse 44. The Hebrews have the unbroken chain as the custodians of the holy scripture, since the time of Noah who taught Abraham about the way of El Shaddai. By a simple analogy, the owners of the parcel of land will be issued the land title, and only the named persons are the inheritors of the land. Yahweh God personally spoke to Moses, that he was the God of his father Amram and of his forefathers by name. In Exodus 3 verse 6, moreover he Yahweh said, I am the Elohim of thy father, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac and the Elohim of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon Elohim.
Unquote. It is a historical fact that Yahweh did not say that he was the God of Ishmael but the God of his brother Isaac and of his grandson Jacob, later known as Israel until today. If Ishmael was the forefather of Muhammad, the Arabs should have kept the same copy of the Holy Scripture since the time of Abraham and not until Muhammad came along as told in Quran Saba 34 verse 44. It is a common practice for the sale and purchase agreement signed between the sellers and the buyers of the residential building to be duly named in the agreement. And every original copy of the agreement will be witnessed by the commissioner of oath and then each copy will be given to the sellers and buyers for custody. The fact that the forefathers of Muhammad were not custodians of the agreement or covenant, proves that Muhammad could not inherit any rights to the prophethood nor the holy scripture of the Hebrews. This particular fact is extremely important for determining whether or not Muhammad was a legal inheritor of the covenant, as required of him in Quran al Imran 3 verse 81. In Deuteronomy 4 verse 2, Moses told the Israelites, Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of Yahweh your Elohim which I command you. In Deuteronomy 12 verse 32, Moses reminded the Israelites, What things soever I command you, observe to do it, thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. Unquote Quran did not come from Yahweh God but by the concoction of Muhammad who plagiarized the histories from the scripture of the Hebrews. The holy scripture of the Hebrews bears the copyright of Yahweh God in term of the modern context, and nothing in the scripture could be reproduced by adding or subtracting the commandments through plagiarism. In short, the copyright terms are spelt in the law of Yahweh God, that the name of Ishmael could not be added into the genealogy of the Hebrew prophets nor the non-Hebrew line of prophets. This copyright term spelt the doom of Muhammad, as one of the false prophets in the last days. Muhammad died within three months of false proclamation, that Jesus Christ was created by Allah in Quran al-Imran 3 verse 59 This sin was unpardonable, as there is no provision of pardoning in Deuteronomy 18 verse 20. Quran Saba 34 verse 44 al Qazis 28 verse 46 and Hood 11 verse 49 collectively confirmed that no warner and no scripture were sent to the forefathers of Muhammad, prior to him, to build the Kaaba in Mecca. The Kaaba was built long, before the Quran was first given to Muhammad in 610 AD, as a guidance from the practice of idolatry with the pagan goddesses such as Al-Lat, al lutra and Manat which were once kept inside the Kaaba. Muhammad could never qualify to stand before Yahweh God Almighty, to ask forgiveness for his own sins and for the sins of his followers, because he broke the law of Yahweh for the priests by marrying the widows of his choice exceeding four wives. Leviticus 21 verse 13 to 14. And he priest shall take a wife in her virginity. A widow, or a divorced woman, or profane, or an harlot, these shall he not take but he shall take a virgin of his own people to wife. Unquote Muhammad took the Jewish widows, whom he killed their husbands through unlawful wars. Nowhere did Yahweh God tell Prophet Moses to enter Saudi Arabia to destroy the pagan Arabs who built the Kaaba for idolatry. If Saudi Arabia was the promised land of Yahweh God for the children of Israel, we would see that Prophet Moses would have headed southward from Jordan to Mecca city instead of northward after exodus from Egypt. Quran 47 verse 19, Muhammad recited, No, therefore, that there is no God but Allah, and ask forgiveness for thy fault, and for the men and women who believe, for Allah knows how ye move about and how ye dwell in your homes. Unquote if Allah knew how Muhammad dwelt in his home with more than one surviving wife called polygyny, then it is clear that he was a habitual sinner by having multiple wives and concubines. Muhammad was not faultless or sinless, as he had to ask God for forgiveness for his sins. Then how could Muhammad act as a priest of God when he himself was sinful in his deeds for marrying widows such as Saifiyah bin Ihyayi and Juayiyah bin Al-Hurath? by virtue of Leviticus 21 verse 14. The fact 
that Muhammad did not destroy the Kaaba built before the Quran was written based on Quran Saba 34 verse 44 but he prostrated before it from afar instead of inside the building proves that he was an idolater violating the Torah of Leviticus 26 verse 1. It is a historical fact that the Kaaba house in Mecca was built to shelter some 360 idols of gods and goddesses that the pagan Arabs prostrate before the idols to worship them. In Quran al-Baqarah 2 verse 144, Muhammad recited, We see the turning of thy face to the heavens, now shall we turn thee to a kibla that shall please thee. Turn then thy face in the direction of the sacred masjid or place of worship, wherever ye are, turn your faces in that direction. The people of the book know well that that is the truth from their Lord, nor is Allah unmindful of what they do. Unquote as the people of the book knew well about the true Kibbala of the Jews as Jerusalem city, then the sacred place of worship in Quran 2 verse 144 should be determined by the people of the book and not by Muhammad. Strictly speaking the word masjid does not mean Mecca, as it was borrowed from an Aramaic word masjid, to mean a place of worship. In conclusion, Islam is purely a practice of idolatry and Hajj paganism worshipping a false god called Allah even, as Ba was a false god of the Midianites. The word Allah came from the man-made compound word al ila contracted to Allah. The worshippers of Allah prostrate five times daily for Sunni Muslims and three times daily for Shia Muslims towards the house of worship called Kaaba in Mecca. The different numbers of times of prayers towards the Kaaba prove that both Sunni and Shia Muslims have gone astray from the path of God. This claim of Kaaba idolatry is irrefutable, as Quran Sabah 34 verse 44 has dissociated Allah from Yahweh God, because Yahweh did not foretell the Hebrews that he would be later known as Allah your God. Nor did Allah tell Muhammad that he was known as Yahweh to the Hebrews. While Muslims falsely claimed that Muhammad was the prophet prophesied by Prophet Moses in Deuteronomy 18 verse 15, they did not bother to point out how many laws had he complied with except to proclaim on one God. The followers of Bulpir also proclaimed to worship one God, the God of Moabites called Bulpir. Deuteronomy 4 verse 3 to 4 Your eyes have seen what Yahweh did because of Bulpir. For all the men that followed Bulpir, Yahweh thy Elohim destroyed them from among you. But ye that did cleave unto Yahweh your Elohim are alive every one of you this day. The God of Ammonites was called Melech. Leviticus 18 verse 21, And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Melech, neither shalt thou profane the name of thy Elohim, I am Yahweh. The God of the Arabs was called Allah. So all these gods called Allah, Molech and Baal were pagan gods. In short, Gabriel did not speak for Allah, nor did Yahweh God speak to Muhammad about 2,500 years too late than he spoke to Abraham the forefather of the Hebrews. The Hebrews have not changed the direction of prayer towards Jerusalem city since the time of King Solomon, who built the first temple of timber as the house of worship in Jerusalem. Jeremiah 23 verse 13. In the prophets of Samaria, I saw an unsavory thing, they prophesied Bible, and led my people Israel astray. Leviticus 19 verse 12. Yahweh told Moses, And ye shall not swear by my name falsely, neither shalt thou profane the name of thy Elohim, I am Yahweh. Unquote Leviticus 20 verse 7. Sanctify yourselves therefore, and be ye holy for I am Yahweh your Elohim. Unquote when Deuteronomy 18 verse 20 is read in conjunction with Leviticus 20 verse 7, we have only one holy name of Yahweh, I am Yahweh your God. All other names are violating the law of Yahweh our God. To profane the name of Yahweh our God, is to blaspheme against his name such as by calling him names, which he did not speak about it nor approve it. Out of 99 names of Allah, how many names come forth from Yahweh our God? 1 Kings 21 13 And there came into men, children of Belial, and sat before him, and the men of Belial witnessed against him, even against Naboth, in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth did blaspheme Elohim and the king.
Then they carried him forth out of the city, and stoned him with stones, that he died. The Sharia law of Islam is violating the Torah of Yahweh, as it is a different set of laws invented by Muhammad and Muhammadans. Leviticus 24:22 Ye shall have one manner of law, as well for the stranger, as for one of your own country, for I am Yahweh your Elohim. Unquote If the Muhammadans worship the same God as the Hebrews, why Allah asked the Muslims to pray in the opposite direction away from Jerusalem city and deviated to Mecca city in the south of Jerusalem. Muhammad led all Muslims astray by changing the direction of prayer from Jerusalem to Mecca city, where none of the Hebrew prophets prayed in that direction. History has proven that some Israelites went astray to serve Baal of Peer and they were all killed by the command of Yahweh God. The fact that Muhammad died within three months after his challenge against the Nijran Christians should have concluded that Yahweh God killed him for speaking falsely in the name of Allah and for speaking falsely for Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The change of Qibla by Muhammad is illogical to be the Kaaba in Mecca, because in 623 AD until 629 AD, there were some 360 idols inside the Kaaba house. Islam is therefore a false religion of the Arabs for these reasons. 1. Angel Gabriel never said, I'm Gabriel sent by Allah. 2. Jesus Christ never said, Children of Israel, I am the messenger of Allah sent to you. 3. Muhammad never said, I worshipped Yahweh God of the Hebrews, whose house of worship was located in Jerusalem. All Muslims should review the foregoing facts about the cult of Islam which is about serving a pagan god Allah which predates Islam, praying towards the Kaaba house of Allah, which none of the Hebrew prophets have done so, and put the word Allah into the mouth of Jesus Christ, that he spoke for Allah thereby profaned the holy name of Yahweh our God. Muhammad sinned in all aspects of the law of Yahweh beginning from his name until his last commandment, to exalt himself as a prophet of Allah. Stay clear from Allah of Muhammad. As the Israelites who went astray to worship Baal of Peer were exterminated. The Muslims are not yet exterminated by Yahweh our God, because the time of judgment has yet to come and it is still under the period of His grace. By relooking at the history of Noah and only eight members of his family were saved in the Ark of Noah, we should be aware that the principle of Yahweh God differs from the criterion of mankind. The fastest growing cult of Islam is not the criterion of Yahweh God, given by him as the benchmark for the true religion of God. Millions of souls at the time of Noah perished in the worldwide great flood, as Muhammad plagiarized and Ray stated in Quran Hood 11 verse 36 to 49. Muslims should examine the question as to why Muhammad and his forefathers did not know the event of the great flood, as stated in Quran Hood 11 verse 49. If he were to come forth from the bloodline of Noah, Abraham and Ishmael? Why the Israelites have the clear genealogy from Noah, Heber, Peleg, Abraham, Isaac, Israel and Judah? But the Arabs have nothing to prove in the Quran that Muhammad was directly related to Ishmael the Hebrew? Most Muslims are unaware of the law of circumcision, that Yahweh God reserved the rights to cut off the relationship with his people if the male child was not circumcised when he was eight days old. There is no evidence that Muhammad observed the law of circumcision, as he only received the scripture when he was forty years old, far beyond the stipulated age of circumcision. Ishmael was thirteen years old and Abraham was ninety-nine years old, when the law of circumcision was enforced upon the family of Abraham. Muhammad could not inherit the promises of Yahweh for the children of Israel because he was not circumcised when he was eighth day old from birth in order to fulfill the law of circumcision. Every Muslim should ask yourself if Yahweh God could be persuaded to accept Muhammad as his prophet when he did not even comply with his commandment on circumcision so as to enter into the family of Abraham. Shalom.